It's the WSL Post Show here at the Shiseido Tahiti Pro presented by Outer Known. The flotilla in the channel is full of celebration for the Australian Jack Robinson taking his fifth career CT win and it couldn't happen at a better time for Jack Robinson. Everything aligned and we're going to see Jack at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. I'm Kuiper Girl along with Flick Felicity Palmentier. Peter Mel and Flick, what a final. I mean, back and forth between Jack Robinson and Gabe Medina. Oh, it was, for me, just so, so exciting. It just, I couldn't believe that they actually both ended up in the final for one. And then <laughs> to have like a seesawing battle, Gabby with the lead in the beginning, then to Jack, then Jack converting with a, at the very end there, just... And just such a great sporting moment. Honestly, like had tears in my eyes and goosebumps. I couldn't believe what I was watching. How's the, how's the Western Australian in you feel right now? <laughs> I'm trying to keep a lid on it. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah, as you should be. I mean, talking about exciting final, Pete, that was uh, back and forth exciting. Hey, look at the conditions deteriorated, but you wouldn't have known by the performances by Gabe Medina and Jack Robinson. No, and if you look at the strategies playing into that final, Gabe was doing exactly what he was going to do. He was going to score early. He did that, and Jack was going to be be patient. He was forced into being patient, but it paid off. It really came down to that just the belief that he has. He was able to, the only real opportunity he was gifted at the end, he, he maximized it and he did everything he could. There were some adjustments that happened in that barrel that literally made it exciting, which pretty much gave me, in my eyes, a slam dunk. It wasn't a question in my eyes whether he got the score or not. Well, talk about Pete, Jack Robinson, bookending a year. Starts the year with a win at Pipe, ends the year with a win at Tahiti, now we're going to see him at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. And uh, you know what? I, it, from the interview that I, I sensed there, it's not finished. I think he's always believed that uh, he wants to get himself at that last event of the year. And the Rip Curl WSL Finals, you know, trestles. He's got the ability to win in that style of wave. We've seen it. He did his first wins on the championship tour were in, uh, you know, waves that are similar to, say, trestles, performance waves. He's got that act. So he's got a chance. And just the perseverance, right? We saw Jack get injured. You know, in, in bells, and we thought, oh no, yellow leader's jersey, Jack Robinson, he's out of it, but he fought back, and he's continued to fight through, Flick. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, you know, the start of, the, the start of Jack's year was incredible, right? He had a, the first at Pipe, and then moving on with a couple of other great results after that, and then having to pull out at Margaret River, where he's done so well in the past. He won it the previous year. Uh, people started to question, like, oh, no, is he losing his momentum here? Like, what's this going to mean? He then came up with another injury at Surf Ranch. <laughs> However, I don't think that – and you could kind of see it in some of his post-heat interviews. I just don't think – even in El Salvador, I saw it too. I just don't think that sort of faded. I think he was always so determined. Like you said, Peter, it was always at the forefront of his mind. He said it. This wasn't going to be his last event. WSL Final Fives was going to be it, and it is. Yeah, I can say that, you know, Jack's Jack, and that's that. Taking a look <laughs> at our brackets and the road for Jack Robinson with this emotional victory, and a victory that happened, you know, at the right time. He talked us through his road to a victory. His road, but I think it's back all the way up to the beginning of this day, right? We had so many scenarios. We were just scrambled brain going, oh, how is this going to unfold? We have Olympic qualification. We're going to have this final five. We had both men's and women's, and there's all of those scenarios unfolding in the day, right? And everyone else kind of knew that too going in here, but Jack, he just knew what he needed to do. He needed to beat Yago in that moment, and that was a big heat, right? I mean, he's uh, surfing against his best friend, and Yago is in the final five. He just took the spot. Yeah. Right. I mean, luckily, I think that that moment, it's like, OK, if it's going to go to anybody, it's going to go to, to, you know, his best friend there in Jack. So good job there. The next one, Leo, Leo put a number against him right out of the gates. Remember that? It yeah. was pretty nuts. It was like, oh, wow. Leo's up to his <laughs> same antics. He's going to put some pressure on Jack. But Jack sat back, waited it out. Boom. Got a score. Made it even again. He was able to execute at the very end of that heat. Same thing happened at the very final. I mean, uh, Gabriel was doing exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to go out there and get eight, you know, 6.83, so, you know, 15 points is a good number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really looked like it was Gabe Medina, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of that final. We're like, oh, no, Gabe's doing it again. Yeah. Well, and, and if you look at his road, he did that every, every heat all the way in this event, all the way until, unfortunately, the final. You know, the perseverance of Jack Robinson rewarded with a victory. Let's take a look at the vision of Jack and the tremendous surfing he did today flick yeah jack was just uh just playing you know set playing it really cool really calm he didn't have to catch a lot of waves he knew the exact type of wave that he wanted to take off out there 
patience was the game and just absolute mastery through the barrel there, just weaving and I just love how the ability Jack has to get so technical in the barrel. We've seen so many different techniques from him. We've seen kick stalls. We've seen him drag his arm, drag the side of his body in the face of the wave. That was a massive heat there uh, where he took out Yago. You know, they, those boys, they're both coached by Yago's dad. It was a major moment. you got to be thinking that uh, they almost probably had uh, probably more fired up to compete against each other than just like, someone else because, you know, you're sparring with this person all the time. So to kind of take it, you can kind of take it to them a little bit harder. And just as the read, Peter, and the way that Jack's identifying the waves and the technique, the body mechanics, everything to thread these backhand barrels. And I think you needed to be very technical and uh, be versatile and be able to kind of eye the best waves because it was a very ragged event. Let's be honest, there was a lot of uh, you know, wonk in it from day one all the way through. It was not perfect. To have, oh, it was uh, pretty rugged, and especially here on finals day, you know, you had to manufacture and create and do things like that. And the best of the best do it. And we saw a climax in the final with the two best surfers of the event showing up in that final and going for a, literally a world title, that last spot. And uh, incredible to see that he was able to do it with that last wave. I mean, look, wave number four was a 7.83 to turn the heat, and then he closed it out. Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff, incredible numbers put up by both of our finalists. Look at that, 7.83, 7.83. Medina looked like he was in control with that 8.17, but couldn't get over the ledge. It's all about Jack Robinson today and the day we're going to celebrate for the Western Australia fleet. Oh, for sure. I'm sure back home there are a lot of crew in Western Australia, especially all those Trig Point boys. I know they would have been watching, cheering on. So excited to see uh, Jack in the final five now. But for me, Medina was so impressive. He had the highest wave of that heat, uh, 8.17. He did have another opportunity. He just fell off. It was a big, nuggety sort of wave and just kind of got gobbled up by the foam ball. So it was almost there for Medina, but Jack. Just Chalk one up for Western Australia. Let's give it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's the men's final. On the women's side, we had just as much drama, Pete. I mean, Caroline Marks uh, had to overcome a number of obstacles on her way to a victory here. And again, we were talking about clinching the final five, Olympic qualification, so many talking points on the women's side, Peter. Yeah, and at the beginning of the day, we had Steph Gilmore, who had that outside chance to be able to find a way if she could get into the final and take a win here. Uh, would have been a big moment, right? But uh, she unfortunately was not able to turn it. It was a tough road for her. Uh, but uh, that was kind of where we all of a sudden started to see just the performance level rise. I mean, especially from a young Katie Simmers, uh, what she's been able to do at 17 years old in a very short period of time. She's grown uh, a great fan base because of she's uh, such a classic human and her surfing ability. Yeah, classic stuff. Flick, let's take a look at the graphic and you can talk us through uh, Caroline Marks, some of the challenges and some of the highlights as this is the finals day breakdown for the Shiseido Tahiti Pro. Yeah, Caroline Marks uh, made it all the way through to the final, but first she had to take down uh, Stephanie Gilmore, eight-time world champion. We saw Steph win her eighth world champion, the last WSL final five. She then had Tyler Wright in her first semi-semi-final number one. And Tyler was looking really informed. Tyler, to me, was someone who just kept getting better and better with each heat with more confidence. So I feel like that was a really evenly matched heat because I feel like Caroline was sort of doing the same thing throughout this event. And then she had a mother of all tasks taking down Caitlin Simmers, who scored a 9.2 in her semifinal up against Vahine, which uh, was the highest wave score for the women during yeah. this event. Yeah, Katie Simmers showing that uh, she's going to be... I mean, we talk about Caroline Marks. We talk about Katie Simmers. Both of them so young. They got another couple of decades in front of them making finals here on the World Surf League. Like, check out... The visions, Peter, Caroline Marks threading some barrels at Telpo. Yeah, early morning, right? She had Steph Gilmore. Steph was looking at a very important heat for her, but uh, it was pretty much all Caroline. Yeah, she looked very comfortable this morning, was able to find the barrel, utilizing the rail as well. You know, this morning it was uh, much cleaner as uh, it was a good start to the morning, especially for Caroline. So she was able to pick up momentum pretty early in this uh, finals day. And that was something that I think confidence-wise she carried throughout the entire event, especially coming up against Tyler Wright. Because she would have seen how well Tyler surfed in that very first heat. So she knew it would have been a, a pretty uh, massive uh, heat for her to get through. And she did it. It was, it was full style. Yeah, I just think this heat here, Caroline just had the ability. Her wave selection was what got her the win. She took off on really nice, clean waves. 
I'm sure she was talking to her coach, Luke. Luke Egan also had a final out here with Andy, so lots of experience for Caroline to draw off from and being inspired by. But, yeah, Caroline uh, just really – wave selection for me was the reason why Caroline won. And in the final, just maturity, I think, just really noticing that that squall moved through. There was a lot of rain. That wing kicked up, and – she made the most of a wave and went to turns where Katie sort of pulled out on one where she maybe could have had that opportunity. Yeah, adaptability displayed by Caroline Marks. Super smart surfing, adapting to the conditions, taking out the W with a couple of fierce turns, Pete. And she did that. You know, she was carrying a very low number at that moment and uh, getting down to the very nitty-gritty at the end of the heat. Had to make sure that she was going to get a number, does it with some turns, very smart. And uh, she picked up momentum all the way through. Conditions were rough, right? She had the nice, beautiful morning heat and then just got a little bit more challenging all the way to the final. There's the numbers right there. 9.23 was enough for Caroline Marks to take out another win on the championship tour. We're going to see both Caroline Marks and Caitlin Simmers in that Rip Curl WSL finals. You know, earlier, Laura Anniver, she caught up with Caroline Marks. And I'd like to hear what Caroline had to say about today's victory. Caroline, wow. Second event win of the year. What a way to bookmark your your season so far. <laughs> How How's it all sinking in? Yeah, I'm super pumped. You know, I think Chopu is a wave that, especially as a Gibby footer, it's kind of like a feather in your cap. You really want to win it. And um, I know Luke, my coach, made the final out here, so I had a one but you know, one up him a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really stoked. Yeah, it feels really good. And heading into the WSL finals, you know, what's the, what's the plans now? A bit of a rest to, and recover, but uh, not long until you have to start thinking about that end goal. Yeah, for sure. I'm really excited to go home and, like, I don't know, just be with my friends and family and sleep in my own bed. It's been like a um, – I feel like I haven't really been home, like, all year. So it, it's really cool that last event is just in, our, in my backyard pretty much. And, um yeah, celebrate, have fun tonight, have fun with my friends when I'm home, and then, uh, then, then focus on trestles. It should be really fun. And looking back at your entire year as a whole so far, what are you most proud of? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, after taking some time off last year, I was definitely, like, pretty vulnerable at the start of the year and just a little bit, like, nervous of, like, where I'd fit in and just kind of, like, okay, i got to find my feet again, and there's new events on tour and new people, and so I'm just, like, really proud of myself and much work I've done, like, mentally and um and and yeah and physically too you know it's been it's been a little bit of a journey but that's that's all part of it and it's been super fun and um i feel like i've really been able to like have fun these this year and that's really been a, a chain like a game changer for me and that's kind of i don't know that's what i did in my first few years and it just feels good to have that back and um i'm just enjoying it enjoying surfing and um it's kind of all flowing which is really cool well you found the mojo and i uh, cannot wait to see you in the wsl finals Congratulations, Carolyn. You are the Tahiti Pro champion. How good's that? <laughs> Woo! Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Enjoy it, babe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're probably too, Caroline. Uh, Caroline Marks is going to be a force to be reckoned with. We talk about that WSL Finals flick. I mean, this is basically her home break, about half an hour from her home in Oceanside. Spends a lot of time at Lower Trestles. Now she can focus on a potential world title. For sure. And uh, the thing I think about there is... She is the only point of difference out of those five women. She's the only goofy, so it's very, very cool. And I like what she said. I'm going to take this time, really soak in this moment, celebrate here, celebrate back home. But then she's got a job to do, so she's going to start thinking about that final. Job's not over yet. We'll take a look at our WSL finals bracket, Peter. And uh, one thing to note when we look at the cast of characters, Pete, is that there's only one surfer that's been here before. Four new faces for the Rip Curl WSL Finals for the women. Yeah, not, uh, you know, number one seed in Carissa Moore is the one surfer you had mentioned that's been there all of these matches, and she's got a ton of experience and a bunch of youth there. So I would say that probably applies a lot of pressure to that number one seed um, because, uh, you know what, she's not going to want to let this one squander again. But look at Tyler Wright, Caroline Marks, Molly Pickle, and Caitlin Simmers. You've got some youngsters there, some veterans, and uh, I will call Caroline a veteran, even though she's only 21, <laughs> because yeah, right. sure. she's been able to do it, right? Yeah. Like she mentioned how she's kind of had to go through and she's had to learn the new format. She's been in the middle of all these changes. Yeah. Uh, so she's been able to adjust to that and get herself an opportunity. And again, it's match play. Winner moves into the next match all the way until meeting up with Chris some more, where those will be the title match. It will be the best of three for a world title. We're crowning another world champ in the water flick. Oh my goodness, I just can't believe it. We're going to have another amazing sporting moment like what we just witnessed this <laughs> afternoon. 
Let's it, go. It keeps on coming. Well, Pete. that's the format. It really is. You can give a lot of credit to it because uh, it's made the middle part of the year exciting, right? We're all of a sudden. With I the mean, mid-season it, cut. Yeah, I mean, it's stressful. I get it for the competitors. It's very stressful. <laughs> but that's sure good action, right? Yeah. I mean, we love to see surfers have to perform in those in those moments. And, again, all the way here to the last event of the year, we could have already crowned a world champion if it had an older format. Mm. And that's not the case. We're all of a sudden creating the event to create the world champion. And that's exciting, right? And we went to the last heat of the year. We it's went crazy. to the last heat of the year to figure out our last man in the bracket for the men. And let's take a look at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Match number one, Pete, is going to be Shambino. Draw Shianka up against Jack Robinson. I like Jack's odds right here, you know, to do what Steph did last year. Go all the way from that very first match all the way to the finals. We could see that, especially when you think about the momentum and the year that he's had. All of a sudden, it's just like, yeah, talk about big roller coasters. He's on that upswing. Look at seed number one and number two. Both called lower trestles their home break. Felipe Toledo, Griffin Cola Pinto. What are their odds for a world title? Wow. I mean, I, I can't go past Felipe to defend a world title. I just, he's so good out there, so fast. He's just got so many, so many tricks in his arsenal. And I just, oh man, he's going to be hard to beat. But uh, Griff as well, you know, home, home court advantage. Yeah. It's exciting. Toledo last year, he had the quad out there, the sharp eye with the dark arts construction. That black beauty model was just flying over lower trestles. We're taking a look back. 2022, Peter, and the quickness of Felipe Toledo. And I think that's why he rode this board. It was something that gave him a little bit more point of difference, as if he needed to be quicker. Well, that's what he did, is that he came out there and he was quicker. He looked spontaneous. There was something where you're like, you didn't know what was going to happen next. You knew it was going to be fast and precise, but you just never knew how much little extra flair he had, what kind of errors he was going to bring to the table, what kind of snaps he was going to do. And uh, like, again, you had mentioned, he was just uh, very looking unbeatable. Uh, and I would say this year, with a little bit of extra rest and uh, the fact that you have to beat him twice yeah, uh, you know, to, to make sure that you get yourself a world title hope. Uh, this man, uh, I think, is going to be, like you said, very, odds are very high for him to take away. We'll win. see if he goes with that swallowtail quad again uh, in this final. It was flying over the water last time, but since we're speaking of boards, click. Let's take a look at our Visla CT Shaper rankings. We got a champ. This is, this is the last event. This is where we crowned the champ. And. Um, Drum roll, please, Pete. Yeah, good, 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 good. That's not a very good drum roll, sorry. <laughs> Matt <laughs> Biolis and the Mayhem crew, congratulations. You are the CT Shaper Rankings champ. And what does that crew win? An overnight stay at the Surf Ranch, a bunch of perfect waves, a good time. Invite me, Matt Biolis. I want to come. And you think about that. I mean, there, it seems like an overnight stay. That means they'll get the night session too, yes. right? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, I'll raise my hand. Uh, I'm nearby. Good. <laughs> How many people can you take? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to try to find out. I got Strider off camera just nodding in his head and, oh, and licking his lips. He's probably going to be there already. <laughs> hey, Sharp Eye made a jump, though. Uh, what's second place? I mean, yeah, yeah, they with the... Pat on the back for second place. Okay. And, and good <laughs> And good vibes for next year. <laughs> but like all of our, hey, look at all of our shapers, our, our board builders. I mean, this is one of the things that like we have to acknowledge. Equipment's a big part of it. And custom-shaped surfboards, it is a labor of love for so many people. So salute to all the shapers, the laminators, the glasses, Pete. I can speak your language right here. Yeah, it's so true. You know, and they are the unsung heroes, really. I think uh, any magic board that you've had in your quiver, and I know all three of us have had those magic boards, um, and it comes down to not just the shaper and the design. It does. With the glassers. You yeah. Know, then what all day, these guys, right? Everything. The sanders are so amazing. You know, fin design, all of that stuff being implemented in there. Even your traction. We'll give us some traction there, too, right? <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Congratulations to Matt Miles and the Mayhem crew. Uh, more inspiration happens uh, in the water here, and we've been doing it all year long, Flick. It's about the rising tides. And we did another great activation here at Teaupo. Yeah, it was beautiful to see. Just amazing. We're here on the 10th stop of the World Championship Tour and we're here with WSL Rising Tides, you know, to be here in Tahiti in one of the most dangerous waves in the world, honestly, and creating space for our next generation of young women, I think is really cool. This is probably one of the best ones I think that we do. So cool to have like all women surf session here at the Ahupo. 
I think taking your time, spending time in the water, that's what makes you, you know, learn about the wave, feel the wave. It's important for us to have these women's only practice sessions at a wave like this where we know that the more time we spend here, the better we're going to get. It's really good to see the, this generation with Kelia and Kiara just pushing the limits. I kind of like the feeling of um, pushing it a little bit further than my expectations and stuff like that. It's mind-blowing how the next generation is just very sharp. It's like they're visualizing, manifesting, and it's, you know, it's happening really fast and it's inspiring to my eyes too. I'm like, okay, I need to like step it up. I can't wait to see what some of these young girls are going to do in the future because for them to be 11 years old today and already be in this lineup is, is pretty incredible. Rising Tides! All right, let's give it up. Let's give it up for a full year of Rising Tides. Those were inspirational at everywhere we went. And um, you, you got to think about when we were young, right? And those moments when you're sharing them with the best pros in the world, right? I mean, I remember you know being there and having you know, Brad Gerlach around me and Tom Kern around me. And those were moments that I will never forget. I mean, the first time I saw Martin Potter at Back Door. I think you actually interviewed India Robinson. As a, um, as a grommet on the rising tides as a board caddy. And, and look at how, you know, it, I, you, you watch them grow up before your eyes flick. Yeah, you do. I know uh, Katie Simmons was uh, only a part of rising tides a couple of years ago, 2019 at Surf Ranch. And now she's uh, part of WSL Final Five, getting second at Te Hopo. <laughs> It's a big deal. And yeah, we got so much more of the WSL Post Show on the way. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We're getting ready for our awards presentation. Yeah, the Olympics will be in Chopu. Chopu is a wave that I love. It's my favorite stop on tour. To serve good at Chopu, you got to be really good. It's a left-hander that is also a really big barrel over a super shallow reef. Chopu is one of the most famous waves in the world, I would say, because of its ferocity, its beauty. It is so much more than just a wave. So we've been going to Teopu since 1999. Tiapu is a unique location, the way it's set up, the wave breaks away from the coastline out on a reef and we have a tower that's right in front to be able to view it. Judging criteria is basic some key elements, commitment and degree of difficulty, then we go to innovative and progressive maneuvers and then we go to the basic key element which is speed, power and flow. It's a very scary wave, it holds a lot of swell. It can be surfed from anywhere from 2 foot to 20 foot. It's one of the most scary waves in the world, but one of my favorite waves in the world. And it's a challenge and it's exciting. It can be the scariest, biggest, most machine-like wave that you've ever seen. Chopu, for me growing up, was a wave that I feared so much. And it so happens to be an Olympic venue now, and I feel like it's one of my favorite events now. It's funny to kind of see that contrast of a wave that I, I was hoping to never ever see ever again to now looking forward to going there. You gotta go big. Yeah, if you do a mistake, you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> you're looking at for people that are taking the waves that others don't want, and that's kind of often where you get your 10-point rods or your high nines. Yeah, inside the barrel, you have like a, the safe place to be, which is right in front of the foam wall. And when the wave is really hard and you're really deep, you kind of have to go through the foam ball and ride the foam ball. And the surfers, they are able to ride that foam ball and control that momentum to come out of the barrel. They deserve more points because that's where the highest degree of difficulty is. 2014 was one of the years where it was at the maximum size of paddling in. And the few guys that did turn on the really big ones, they were getting those 10 point rides. I believe Owen had one which was really just thick and square and that's why he got that score. So to have surfing in the Olympics held at that venue would be very special and I could imagine if you could win a medal getting blown out of big barrels in Tahiti. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> I hope it's big and scary and we have to push ourselves over the ledge on big waves. And I think it'd be cool for the world to see surfing like that. It's gonna be 
one of the biggest moments that they've ever had showcasing a sport which is dangerous, beautiful and something that they haven't seen before. Qualification season champion by Shiseido and Peter. It's all about the wave and the wave and the wave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to have some guts, right? I mean, you look at all the images there. Uh, this place is magnificent. I mean, not only the views that you see when you look in at the, the shoreline, but the wave itself, it's mesmerizing. I remember my first year in 2014, I actually you know, had a camera with me and I remember shooting a sequence of photos and it is the most absolutely perfect wave. It is like exactly what you want. Now there's not a drop out of place. And it was like the best photo I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> and I still keep it everywhere. It's, uh, it's the greatest thing and it's, it is an absolute perfect wave. And there's not many in the world that are gonna have that just ruler edge, everything about it is absolutely perfect. The reef's set up that way, but it holds a lot of danger. It is shallow, it is scary. Uh, it, it instills a lot of fear in surfers across the board. Yeah, Flick, is there anything like the end of the road here? Oh, oof. to be honest, I don't know if there's a more perfect barrel in the world. It, like you said, Pete, not a drop of water out of place, but I just love that this spot is a spot on the tour that is just a spot of so much consequence and we just really get to see who really has it in them to really swing and take off on those ones. Like the judges said that not anyone wants a bar off because that's when you're going to get those hero moments, those 10 point rides, those crazy moments. Yeah. I, I don't know if there really is another spot like it. Yeah. Let's keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep coming back. Well, let's go to get ready. We're going to make it official. Let's go to our awards ceremony with Joe Trapel. Manuya, Joe. Manuya Kaipo. Yorana, everybody. Thanks for being here. Maite. So great to be here. This is the official award presentation for the Shiseido Tahiti Pro, presented by Outer Gnome, the 10th spot of um, the World Surf League Championship Tour, the 10th being the final of the regular season, and we're so thrilled to be back here each and every year for the World Title Showdown, just like you saw today. It was incredibly exciting. We're so grateful to be back here in the land of Tahiti as well. I'd like to formally acknowledge that we are on Tehupo, Fare Mahora, land and we acknowledge Tehupo and Fare Mohora, the people, the owners of the land and the waterways. Uh, the, everyone welcomes us like their family. That love that you show us, we carry with that with us all around the world with you. And you we can't thank you enough. Thank you for all of our community partners as well who have joined us to lead our WSL One Ocean Coral Reef Restoration Initiative here at Tehupo. From the Coral Gardeners to the Tahiti ET Surf Club and also the Association of Hawaii Tehupo. Thank you so much. Maruru. We'd also like to thank our official partners, our title partner Shiseido, our presenting partner, Outer Known, the Tahiti Government, the Tahiti Institute of Youth and Sport, Tahiti Tourism, Red Bull, Yeti, Oakberry, Mofi, Surfline, True Surf, Air Tahiti Nui, Vini, Polynesi One, Sherry, and also the Tahitian Surfing Federation. Maruru, thank you for all that you do. Special thank you to the local stakeholders, our High Commissioner Eric Spitz, President of the Government in Charge of Tourism, Moitai Brotherson, Minister of the Youth in Charge of Sport, Nahema Tamari, Director of the IJSPF, Artia Bernardino. Also, thank you to the Mayor, Taya Rapu West, from Te Tuanui Hambin, the Mayor of Teahupo, Ranu Poreu, and also the President of Tairupu West Tourism Committee, Bernadette Wasna, the President of the Tahitian Surfing Federation, Lionel Tehotu, and also our local WSL uh, representative, Pascal Luciani. Thank you so much for all this great support. Also a big thank you again to all the families we stay with. You guys are amazing. This community is truly paradise. And thanks for bringing us back every year. We got some incredible people up here with me. First, let's hear a round of applause for the president. President Brotherson, thank you so much for having us. Maruru. Also, Renato Hickel doing a great job for so many years. Uh, congratulations on another well-executed event. Officially, Renato, the WSL Director of Tours and Competition. Right next to Renato, we've got Jesse Miley Dyer, Chief of Sport, longtime competitor. Thanks so much, Jess, for helping with the trophy presentation. We 
We always talk about the beauty here. It's it's incredible. The Polynesian culture, the beautiful pyramid mountains, the, the wave itself, truly paradise. But also the wave creates fear and intimidation, but creates loyalty and a love to improve your act out here as the best surfers in the world. CTs come happening back from 1999 to what we're seeing today. It's been an evolution of tube riding, and it shows the bravest on tour always survive and become our champions. Uh, we had a lot of local legends in this event. Let's uh, get behind these local Tahitians that got to represent their island and their wave from Mihimana Bray, representing in the CT format. Mihimana, you're incredible. Matahi Drole, Kauli Vast, Island Vast, Vahine Fiera. Thanks for hosting us so well, and you guys certainly showed up as a force to be reckoned with when we come here at the CT level. It's also a final five decider. And I don't know if that got any more exciting. It came down to the last heat of the event to round off our title race that heads to the Rip Curl WSL Finals this September. So this wave, being so special, holds a lot of weight for good reason. Not only where we're talking about the title race, but it's also Olympic qualification season this year uh, for Paris 2024. As we know, the venue's right back here at Teahupo. We couldn't be more excited. The World Surf League Championship Tour is actually a tier one qualifier, qualifying 10 men and eight women on this system. So we saw all that come down to the wire as well. And it's exciting to see uh, what we will expect in the Olympic Games next year. Let's take a moment to congratulate a lot of our qualifiers from this event for Team Australia. Tyler Wright will be in her first Olympic Games. Joined by Molly Picklam as well. For the men for Australia, Ethan Ewing and congratulations, recent addition, Jack Robinson, right back here at the end of the road. Representing Japan in the Olympics for Paris 2024, Kano Igarashi. For Portugal, Teresa Bonvila. For South Africa, Jordi Smith and Matthew McGillivray. Also for Brazil, we'll have Tatiana Weston Webb competing here at Teahupo. Felipe Toledo. And now, just getting the news, Joao Chianca for Team Brazil. Big congratulations to Costa Rica's Brisa Hennessy. For France, Joanne de Fay. For Italy, Leonardo Firavanti. And for the United States of America, Carissa Moore will have a chance to defend her gold medal here at Tehupo. Her teammate for the women will be decided at the Rip Curl WSL final, so stand by for that at Lowers in September. And also big congrats to Griffin Colapinto and John John Florence. We'll see you at the Olympic Games. So now Jesse's going to help me with some trophies here, which is going to be great. I'd like to introduce your runner-up, the men's final for the Shiseido Tahiti Pro, presented by Outer Known, a three-time road champ and one of the all-time greats here in Tahiti, Gabriel Medina. Gabriel. There's something really magical about you here in Tahiti. Uh, you give us so much entertainment, but so much consistency, proving you're always the guy to beat. No matter what your season looks like, you always turn up here. Tell us on what you're feeling right now, making it all the way to an incredible final showing once again. Uh, yes, this is a place that I really like to be, and uh, Tahiti is always so nice to me. You know, uh, it's, it's my favorite stop on tour. Um, and I'm really happy again, you know, to make another final here. It's been really fun. Uh, all the people here are so lovely and the waves are amazing. So it's a special place for me. And uh, I just feel good, you know, when I'm here. So it's a, it's a yeah, it's a good place to be. <laughs> uh, for all that you've accomplished in your career, being one of the all-time greats, just kind of digesting what you accomplished on a big finals day, what, what's going through your mind right now? Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's life. Yeah, um, I did I, what I could. You know, I, I put everything I, uh, I had there, and uh, I tried to make hard for these guys, and uh, it was almost enough, but not enough this time. But um, I mean, I had a few already few good events here. I I can't complain. You know, uh, as I said, uh, Chopo gave me so much already. So. I'm just thankful for another opportunity. Um, I had a, another great final, and I'm just happy with my surfing. And 
as I say, just to get a few barrels, you know. Uh, it's just what surfing means to me, you know, uh, surfing and getting barrel. Well, on behalf of everyone that gets to watch you, we can't thank you enough for all the entertainment. You're a true champion, Gabriel. Enjoy the off-season. Oh, yeah, and congrats to, to all the winners. Uh, Jack, Caroline, um, they, they've been surfing so good. And, uh, yeah, that was a great show. Um, yeah, hopefully they can make, make it uh, a good moment. Parabéns, <laughs> valeu. Gabriel Medina, let's hear it once again for a legend of the sport. And how about this young lady? She's still only 17 years old. Believe it or not, she's still a rookie on tour. And yeah, she's going to be competing for a world title this September. Let's hear for your runner-up in the women's final of the Shiseido TD Pro presented by Outer Known, Katie Simmers. <laughs> Katie Simmers in her rookie year making a final. First time competing at this event. That was really special, watching you surf. I think you got your best single score of the season in the semi-final, that 9.2. That thing was out of control. You said you wanted to get barreled in this event, and that must have felt amazing. Um, yeah, my first couple heats, um, yeah, I just kind of like had bad heats, but kind of just got lucky and got through them, and I just kind of the whole event I wanted to make a barrel, so it was nice in that semi to make a barrel. And yeah, I wish we kind of got better conditions for the final, but it was still f super fun, and I'm happy for Caroline. She's a homie, and she rips, so, yeah. <laughs> What's your takeaway? Your first time competing here, making a final about the wave with the intimidation, but also everything that you were able to accomplish? What's your, what's your takeaway? Um, yeah, this is one of the most scary waves in the world. I've kind of got really a lot of respect for it, and... I don't know. It's a, it's a tough wave to learn, and you have, definitely have to learn about it and kind of just figure it out. And <laughs> I definitely still haven't figured it fully out yet, but, yeah, it's definitely a goal to get better here. And, yeah, just get barreled. It's a really perfect wave. Once again, congrats on taking that fifth spot for the WSL Final Five. Uh, that was probably a – could have been a stressful situation to hang on to that spot to compete for a world title. First, congrats. And – how did you get through all that noise? Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a like up and down year. I feel like I've either gotten first or last this whole year, and I wasn't really expecting like to make the final five. I was kind of just hoping I would make the cut, and then it it happened pretty fast. So yeah, and then coming the, to this event, I kind of wasn't really expecting it, and then everyone was kind of telling me the situations that had to happen, and I was like, oh, it's actually kind of. <laughs> I'm close to making it, and yeah, it was, it was a fun event, and I'm happy to make it to Lowers, because it's pretty, it's the most rippable wave in the world, so yeah. Congratulations on your final, best of luck in September. Katie Simmers, runner-up and competing for a world title, maybe starting September 8th in the waiting period. And now it leads to... The man from Australia that went through a tough part of the year through some serious injuries and took out the win. Let's hear it for your champion of the Shiseido TD Pro presented by Outer Known, Jack Robinson. Jack with a great moment with the president. Thank you so much. Jack, why don't you come up here with me for a moment here? We've got a lot to talk about, my friend. Starting off the season with a win at Pipeline, bookending it with a win in Tahiti. But there was a lot that happened in between. Did you imagine that you'd be standing here on the podium with all you went through with all those injuries at the halfway point of the season? <laughs> uh, special. Huh? It's, uh, I've been here a long time, coming to Tahiti, and I just really appreciate uh, everyone here, you know, sharing this place. And, you know, just... I don't know, I feel like, you know, it was meant to be, I feel like, and uh, yeah, I feel the energy, the mana of this place, a lot of years, and just want to say thanks to Tahiti and everyone here, um, but yeah, going back to the start of the year, first event and the last event, um, and then, you know, had to go through the roller coaster um, on the way up to get back here, um, yeah, I just couldn't give up, I had to just give it everything, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank the people that are with me, you guys know who you are, um, yeah, everyone that kept believing, and I think I had to believe a lot, though, because uh, to get back here was 
is going to be hard, especially against these guys, Gabriel and all the guys in the event. Um, yeah, it was it was a big challenge, but it makes you stronger. <laughs> Having Gabriel Medina in the final, you know, the best in modern day times here at the end of the road. And what was that final like? And were you aware that you had to win to get a spot in the WSL final five? Uh, yeah, I, I looked at his semi-final and went, okay, is he going to win? Okay, well, he's probably going to win. It's going to be me and him. I just got to go win the event. Um, yeah, but, you know, I respect all the guys on tour, especially, you know, he's, he's going to bring out the best of me, I think, a lot. Um, probably many more to come, but, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't think about too much. I just want to enjoy this place. I'm just feeling like I'm in the moment, you know, enjoying this place. That's the main thing. Coming from eighth in the world now to the number five spot. We'll see it lower trestles for the second time in the road at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Best of luck, best of waves when the world title showdown happens this September. Thanks so much. I don't know. <laughs> Let's hear it for Jack Robinson. These guys standing tall here because they've got to dance pretty soon. And this little weapon of a goofy foot is standing by. Let's get really behind this surfer representing Florida, now living in California, being coached by the great Luke Egan, your champion of the women's final, the Shiseido TD Pro, presented by Outer Known, Caroline Marks. <laughs> Caroline winning in El Salvador earlier this year, now winning Tahiti for the first time in her career. It's just the second time on the calendar for the women after a hiatus since 2006. Coming up here, champ. Caroline, so proud of you. I, I think we talked earlier this year and you kind of identified Tahiti as a place you, you really wanted to win. You did it. Yeah, it feels good. Um, this is definitely probably like the best wins of my career, like wave-wise and, you know, the final, the waves were pretty tricky, but yeah, it's definitely like a dream event to win for sure, especially as a goofy footer. So it feels really good. A lot of youthful energy that was kind of felt on the women's tour throughout this event. What was it like sharing the final with, with Katie? Yeah, it was super cool. As, as she said, we're, we're homies. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really cool. And um, she's been surfing so well this year. So I knew it was going to be a really tough final. And, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You're a surfer that really embraced all these cool events that are popping up, like Te Hupo. And now with your second event here, and now a champion, how do you look back on the evolution that the whole tour has been putting in, and in barrel riding, and taking on an intimidating wave? Yeah, for sure. I definitely like the girls' performances this year. Are definitely a lot better than last year, and I feel like it's just going to keep getting better and better. And um, we're all learning on the fly. Like I feel like I was learning in every single heat. Um, so I definitely want to spend more time here and get better. And now it's an Olympic venue, so. Definitely a place you want to be good at, but it's just such a beautiful wave. It's, um, yeah, one of the best waves in the world. So it's just so special to be out there and compete. And yeah, it's really fun. So much to look forward to. We'll see you in September again, the title race, also for Olympic qualification. Best of luck on your new home break. Thank you. Do you like to dance? Oh, my God. Okay, well, Gabe's a good dancer. Just take his lead. Thank you so much, everybody. This community is absolutely incredible. I think it's definitely time to dance. We'll bring up the local dancers and continue the celebration on the WSL Post Show. Take it away, Kaipo. The party's about to get started. <laughs> I love it, Joe, and congratulations to all of our finalists. Um, it was a journey to a win here. So much on the line. Now, dance it off. Have a good time, huh, Pete? That's right. That's what it's about. That's, uh, you know, at the very end of the road, you got to be able to do the hula, and uh, that's part of it. Uh, Gabriel's good. done that before. <laughs> well, he's, yeah, he's made five finals here. He should know how to dance. <laughs> uh, good stuff at our awards presentation here. And uh, thank you, Maruru, to um, everyone who's been so hospitable here in Tahiti. Truly a dream stop on the championship tour. All right, well, WSL Post Show, it continues. We got so much more to talk about. Um, and one of the things that Joe touched on on that awards presentation is it's qualification season, Flick. And uh, we get, look at some of our qualifiers on the women's side. Let's take a look at where we've gone so far. World Surf League, a tier one qualifier for that 2024 Olympics. Let's see who's qualified so far. Looking forward to the Olympics. Right here at this spot. You think about it. 
So, everything is settled. We got Team Australia settled. We have Tatiana Weston Webb, Joanne DeFay, uh, representing their country. Brisa Hennessy is going to bring it for Costa Rica. Teresa Balnock for Portugal. But, Peter, the USA still yet to be decided. Will it be Caroline Marks, Katie Simmers? We're going to find that at WSL Finals. That's right. Whoever finished higher and uh, whatever that place is, you're going to earn your spot on the Olympic team to be able to compete right out here. And uh, both those surfers, being that they've made the final out here, they're both great picks. So uh, let's we'll see how they finish it at the uh, lower trestles. But, for, the, uh, for the women, Flick, we have a chance of Carissa Morgan back-to-back with gold medals. Yeah. and It's not going to be the case for the men. No, it's definitely, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not. But uh, I, I like Chris's chances out here. I, I've seen her techniques really good in the barrel. Um, she just def- def- got taken down by Fahine Fierro in this event. But, yeah, I just – I really like Chris's chances. Her technique, backhand barrel riding is looking really good. So, yeah. Maybe, sure she's gonna maybe a second gold medal for Chris Moore. We're going to find out. We've got a whole year to do that. But now let's take a look at the men, Peter, and the qualifiers for the 2024 20, Olympics. For the guys, Team USA set up Griffin Colapinto, John John Florence. Woo-hoo. Yeah, great team there. Uh, you think about what we were doing as we were unfolding this event. We pretty much got everyone there except for the Brazilian team. You know, now it's and set. Just, and now it's set. You know, John Chonka was able to get that opportunity. He's the only two Brazilians making it in into the WSL Final Five, and uh, that's big news. I mean, Joao being able to compete for a world title, or sorry, a gold medal out here at, and this place right here, good chances there, good team for Brazil, and basically all 10 are set. Yeah, and a good chance for an Australian gold medal. And you know who I'm eyeing up? Jack Robinson, because he already did it once out here, and I got all the faith in the world that Jack Robinson can do it again. Honorable mention, Leo Fernandi, right? Yeah. Big one right Russian. there, right? And South Africa's already represented as well. A couple of winners right here, and Jack Robinson uh, is going to be holding up the Australian flag when we go to the Olympics 2024. But we got a lot of stuff to go on before that. We have the Rip Curl WSL Finals. We got the beginning of the next season. We have so much going. But what Challenger the f- Series. Challenger Series still to be to f- be figured out. We have yeah. two more events in that Challenger Series. Who's going to be on tour? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> WorldSurfLeague.com. Um, but my favorite thing that we know that we're going to do is go through our top five happenings, moments, here at the Shiseido TD Pro, outer known, and uh, this is some good stuff. At number five, tail pull. You know what? It's a barrel full of barrels, Flick. <laughs> Lots yeah. of them out there. Definitely is. This wave does what it does best. It absolutely tubes, and there has been a few people that have managed to find them. We just saw John before with a beautiful barrel. Tyler just kept getting better and better with each, with each heat out there. Looking more and more confident. Really liked what I saw from her out there. But uh, Vahini Fiera, always going to be a favorite of mine. Absolute queen when it comes to surfing out here at Teahupo. She did it in all sort of conditions. Out right there, that one in one of her opening round heats. A bit ugly, a bit messy, but she still managed to find a diamond in the rough. Medina, always finding tube time. Teahupo oh, dreaming. <laughs> That's the number five. It's about this wave. It is the special place that we come to each and every season. Uh, this is a staple on tour. Everyone talks about this event being one of their favorites, right? I mean, Gabe did, said it right there on stage. This is his favorite event on tour. Number four takes a lot of juice to beat the goat, and that's exactly what Yago Dora squeezed out of the end of the road. Buzzer beater here to defeat Kelly Slater, Pete. Yeah, Kelly was running away with this one, and uh, when he's lat on a roll, he's very tough to beat. And you know what Yago did? He didn't think about that. He didn't think that he was surfing against a goat. He just went out there and got it done. And uh, at the last minute heroics, be able to beat Kelly and uh, inform Kelly. Yeah, eight-point ride within the last few seconds of this final, taking the win off of Slater. That was the wave there, and uh, he knew it. At the end of that, he was feeling very good about that. And it was a do or die heat for Yago at this moment uh, because he needed to stay on pace to keep us uh, an opportunity for him to finish in that final five. Unfortunately, Jack took that away. Number three, Drausianka, Katie Simmers, 
Flick, we're going to see them in the WSL finals. Yeah, we are. I think uh, this event probably has mixed emotions for Jao. He really came in here, he was in that number four spot, and he ended up bailing out of the event and had to watch from the sidelines, see how everything unfolded. But uh, Katie here, we just saw her, that was her 9.2, which uh, saw her move through to the final there. But yeah, massive effort by these two. They clinched their spots. Nervous moments for Jao. Number two, P, congratulations, Caroline Marsh. She's our winner here at the Tahiti Pro. Big confidence booster for her, especially when she's going into this uh, last event of the season looking for a world title. But this is a sweet, sweet win. Uh, you know, you're legendary. When you can win at a place like this, one of the most scariest spots on earth, being able to have been known as a barrel rider, she is now known as a champion out here, and that feels really, really good for Caroline. And I love that she's going to be able to try and carry this into the event. It's in two weeks' time we're going to be crowned world champions. Caroline Marks uh, doing one better than her coach, Luke Egan, actually took a win out here. <laughs> Luke, a runner-up. Number one, let's give it up, Felicity, for Western Australia. Jack Robinson with the big W. Oh, amazing effort from Jack Robinson. He really only had one goal in this event, and that was to win it. He, uh, there was no other option. A couple of other things needed to go his way. They did, but I've said it again, and I, I've said it already, but I'll say it again, just mastery within the barrel. They, he just is so at home at waves of consequence and waves that have big rivets through them like we saw today. It wasn't perfect to her whole It was a bit ugly. There's a lot of waves in Western Australia like that, and yeah. How about amazing. bookending the, the, the season, Pete? With winning pipe, winning Tahiti. And the fact that he was able to clinch a spot and... He's also clinched a spot for the Olympics. And those yeah. were two things that were question marks when he headed into this event. You know, long shot, really, to get into that final five. He had to go out here and win. And the clinch of also getting that Olympic spot is huge because he has probably one of the best chances to win gold. Yeah, giant goals achieved. Final thoughts, Lissy? Blown away and a great sporting moment. That, that just... Third time I've said it. But <laughs> it really, really was. Makes it a charm. Super, super emotional moment for Jack and a great way to finish... Uh, the tour. Pete? Final thoughts. I mean, I'm going to go right back to the format again once again because it, it's made it exciting all season long. Uh, all throughout the year, we had moments that were stressful and we saw these great sporting moments, especially at the very end of the year. We were able to uh, see it all the way down to the last heat, and that's cool. Yeah. I like it. It's really good. Well, we got more in store for you this year. That's right, the Rip Curl WSL Finals. That's going to start September 8th, the waiting period. Go to worldsurfleague.com for all the updates. Meanwhile, enjoy these end of event highlights. Aloha, Yorana. We are back in paradise. It's big, it's pretty hefty, it's got a lot of jumbo in it. Beautiful tube and gets eaten alive by the tube monster. I love this turn straight up into the lip. Late takeoff and pulls up and under. Kelly Slater oh. getting technical. Look at this. <laughs> Section landing at him. He ends up somehow holding on to his stance. How about that read from Medina? It looks like wow. he's got the exit. Florence is going to punch <laughs> through again. Robinson in the barrel, threads it through there. That's what the best barrel riders can do. Here goes Griff, pig dogging into this one. Kelly Voss pulls right in under the hood. Incredible surfing by the GOAT, Kelly Slater. Yago going the distance. Chasing a 7-7-6. Yago Dora does it on the final wave, upsets the GOAT. Jack Robinson pull into wow. a beast. Wow, he just said, come on. The show continues for the man from the North Shore of Oahu. And how about this cave for John Florence? 
It's a great morning when you wake up to finals day and see that there's still some really good surf out there. Big day, finals day for our quarterfinalists, for the men and women, filling up those spots in the WSL Final Five and also provisionally qualifying our surfers for the Olympic Games. That's a lot to take on. Pulling up, Tyler once again pulls in. What a great spot to sit inside the tube. Steph Gilmore goes down to Caroline Marks, and congratulations to Caitlin Simmers. We will see you at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Bahina Fierro tucks into a barrel and goes complete there, the Tahitian wild card. 2024 Olympics, yeah, it should be good. Great job for Leonardo Fioravanti taking out Kali Voss. Jack Robinson does get the win, and that means good news for Joao Chianca. Here he goes. Tucks in right off the takeoff. Second section for Medina. Threads through there. Little stalling. Third section. So incredible. Really, truly incredible. He took off in the barrel. Setting up a big section. Katie Simmers with her head down. Comes flying out. 9.23. How about that? Caroline Marks takes out the season finale. And Jack Robinson is officially the champion of the Shiseido Tahiti Pro presented by Outer Known. And we will see you at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.